In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to properly take care of a Mexican black king snake. Mexican black king snakes can get three to five foot in length in adulthood, so we need an enclosure that's big enough to allow them to stretch out fully across the length of the enclosure. A good bet would be a four by two by two enclosure, although if they get bigger than four foot in length, I would recommend that you upgrade. You can use a maximum reptile enclosure like the one behind me. They're great, they're escape proof, especially for my adult Mexican black king snakes. Or what you could do if you've got a baby is you can get their 40 gallon and raise it up there in a grow out. Mexican black king snakes are ectotherms. Now what that means is they need external heating from their environment. And that's why we need to provide heating. We want to give them a little patch of sunshine like they would have outside. The thing to remember is MBKs only want a gentle amount of warmth. They don't want it baking hot. To do this we can give them a very low wattage heat bulb in a dome over one side of their enclosure. That means they'll have their sunshine patch and some shade and they can move in and out of the shade and the sunshine patch as they choose. Now there are MBK breeders, especially over there in the States, that will just breed them and keep them a set ambient temperature. Now I disagree with that because I feel like they should be given the choice to thermoregulate in and out of different zones. But it does prove the point they will live, feed, defecate and breed at a set ambient temperature. Therefore it doesn't really matter what temperature we're trying to shoot for in terms of how warm we can get our basking spot to, all we really need to worry about is, is it too hot for them to be under? Is it blisteringly hot? And if not, it's fine. That gentle warmth from a low wattage heat bulb is just gonna allow them to sit there with a gentle amount of warmth and warm their bodies above that ambient in the enclosure should they want to. And even if they don't, that ambient is proven to do them just fine anyway. A 25 or 50 watt heat bulb from either Exoterra or Zoomed would do just great in this example. The ambient air in the daytime in the enclosure can be anywhere from 70 to 80. What you'll find is that's room temperature-ish and they'll probably get to that in the room anyway and the heating in our sunshine patch is going to get our ambient temperature to that anyway. At night time in most cases you can have no heating at all. Letting it cool down at night is really really good for their immune systems. They want to cool down, shut down, go to sleep and in the morning it encourages them to go bask and fire up and switch on their immune system. You can let the ambient nighttime temperature drop to as low as 60 at night before you even need to worry about giving any form of supplemental nighttime heating. However if you do live somewhere really really cold then you can offer them something like a heat mat or a radiant heat panel on a thermostat set to sort of like 60 to 65. Now UVB is fantastic for Mexican black king snakes. Mine bask all the time. It's the rays of sunshine that give them that feel good factor on the skin. It's the cells in the skin that release endorphins in relation to UVB. It also allows them to make vitamin D in their body which helps them metabolize calcium which is essential for good bone health. And for a growing king snake, that's so important. Now the Mexican black king snakes won't die without UVB, but they're gonna be so much healthier if you do give it to them. We can use a UVB lamp over one side next to our heat dome in our sunshine patch. Again, maintaining that shade on the other side to allow our snakes to come in and out and choose. I wouldn't want the UVB to extend no more than half the way across the enclosure just to keep that shade there. Now I do have a really detailed guide on picking the exact bulb at exact distances in differing enclosures and it's gonna come up top right right now. However, if you're gonna follow this guide and you're going to use a maximum reptile enclosure, then I've done the maths and picked a bulb for you. A small 12 inch 5.0 Reptisun T5 would be perfect for either of those setups that I've exampled. And then if you're going to grow it out on the 40 gallon, you can just simply move it from the 40 gallon onto your big 4x2. I've made sure mathematically that it is safe and you're not going to overexpose your Mexican black king snake. Just make sure that your Mexican black king snake can't climb more than five inches to the bulb and you'll be absolutely fine. Now you want to turn these bulbs off at night so it's dark for them like it would be outside. You can use digital wall timers and set it for a 12 hours on, 12 hours off. 
So for example, you could do 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Now you're going to want to measure and monitor all these parameters. So you're gonna need some tools. You're going to need a digital thermometer and a temperature gun. What I want you to do is place the thermometer on the shaded end. And what that means is that there's no sunshine from our sunshine patch reaching thermometer and getting it warmer than the actual air temperature and raising it to a false reading. If it stays in the shaded end outside of sunshine, that will give you a true reading of the actual air temperature in that enclosure. Now you can find this linked down below. Now you want a temperature gun to make sure that the temperature underneath your heat bulb isn't blisteringly hot. If it gets more than 95 underneath this heat bulb, they're probably gonna likely avoid it. If you've got a rock underneath that heat bulb and that's why it's getting really hot, I'd recommend changing to a piece of wood. And if that's still too warm, change it to just bare substrate. Speaking of substrate, Mexican black king snakes absolutely love to dig. So it's really important that we put substrate at the bottom of our enclosures. In the wild, they'll go underground or under cover objects or in holes if it's too hot or too cold on the surface. And they'll seek humid microclimates down in the earth or underneath cover objects. So I'd recommend giving them a soily substrate like mixing topsoil and play sand or a pre-made mix like Zoomed's Repti Soil. This will allow you to lock down moisture down below but have it dry on the surface still. Now you can use dry substrates like aspen shavings or lignocil or pine shavings. All of that's totally safe but it is bone dry. It's fantastic for holding their tunnels that they dig through it, but it doesn't have that moisture. So you're gonna to have to make up with that with a humid hide. No matter which option you choose, just make sure that the substrate is several inches deep to allow them to dig. Mexican black king snakes are very, very secretive and do best when there's lots of clutter in their enclosure. What they'll do is that that'll make them feel far more secure. They want to get on, in, under, behind lots of different objects in their enclosure. What's going to happen is making them feel like they have hiding spaces and feel more secure anywhere in their enclosure means you're actually going to see your snake more because rather than clinging to a hide because there's vast open spaces, they will know that anywhere they go in their enclosure, they can dip away into a hide at any moment, which actually makes them be bolder and come out more. In terms of hides, I really like cork bark. It's rot resistant and mold resistant, even if you get it wet. Also being cork, it's really lightweight. So our king snakes can dig their tunnels underneath different pieces of cork bark, and it's not going to crush them with its weight. You can use plastic hides or any hide that you want to, just make sure that you clutter it up enough that they can move across the entire back of the enclosure without being seen if they want to. I would place a piece of cork bark in your sunshine patch so your king snake can sit up top and bask or be inside where it's dark and warm. Just make sure that it doesn't allow your king snake to get within five inches of your bulbs. Although these snakes are terrestrial, Mexican black king snakes love to climb. Mine climb all the time. It's really good for keeping them fit and it activates those muscles. So don't be afraid to give them branches to climb upon. Just make sure that they can't again get within five inches of the bulbs. You also want to give them a water bowl to drink from and just change out that water every day. Cleaning your MBK setup is pretty straightforward. Every day, just check for poop that you need to clean up. A rough ballpark, once per month, you want to take everything out, take out all the substrate, disinfect and wipe down the enclosure and put brand new fresh substrate in. That's just to give beginners some routine and structure, but the truthful answer is when it really needs it. You can have a snake that doesn't really make a mess and it still smells really fresh and clean long after a month, or you can have a snake that makes a mess within two weeks. If it smells clean and it is clean, or if it smells bad, clean it. The disinfectant that I use is F10. It's veterinary grade, it's animal safe, and it's really, really good. So if you want some of that, links in the description. Now in the wild, Mexican black king snakes eat a really varied diet, and that means they'll really appreciate a varied diet in your home. Historically, they've always done really well on just eating mice. So you can use mice as a baseline for your diet, and then what you can do is swap in variety from there, here and there. You can feed Mexican black king snakes mice, rats, hamsters, gerbils, African soft furs, day-old chicken chicks, quail chicks, quail eggs, older quails, reptile eggs, frogs legs, and gnolls, or you can even get reptilinks sausages. What I'd recommend is feeding your Mexican black king snakes a prey item 
that's 10% of the total body weight of your snake. So if you have a 100 gram snake, you would feed them a 10 gram mouse. If you've got a really young baby snake, I would feed them every five days and eventually with size and age, getting up to adulthood, move that to every 10 days. Now with adults, I've got a bit of a system going here. I will feed them every 10 days as maintenance. If they act crazy hungry or they're biting in a food response, more often that's typical of their individual behavior, then I will take it down to every seven days and hold it from there and see how they get on. If that settles them and they don't gain weight, that's where your individual's metabolism actually lies and you can stay there. If it starts gaining weight though, I will take it back up to 10 days. And if it's still gaining weight, you can go to 14 days. And if it's still gaining weight at 14 days, I would take it down a prey item. What I have noticed is generally it takes them 48 hours to 72 hours to poop. So over time, you'll learn to start looking for poop after you fed. MBKs have a reputation for being bitey. It's just the case that MBKs are actually really inquisitive and excitable, but don't really think before they act. So if your fingers are there, they might bite to eat without even questioning whether it actually is the mouse or not. They act first, think second. Or they might be chewing on the side of a water bowl for a while before they even realize that it isn't food. They aren't nasty by any means, they're just really excitable. And you can train that out of them, but that's a whole other video. If you want to have a really good relationship with your Mexican Black King Snake, I would look at their behavior. The good thing is they have really clear lines of behaviorally communicating with you when they want you to leave them alone. For example, the first step on the ladder is a tail rattle. They'll rattle their tail against the substrate to get you to move away from them and leave them alone. So if it isn't an emergency situation, I would recommend just don't grab them, don't pick them up. If they don't want it, leave them alone. If you haven't listened and you still try to, they might respond with trying to S up and strike. They're trying to create distance between you and them using teeth this time. And if you still pick them up, then they might musk. Now musking is when they release a fishy smelling secretion from their cloaca in the wild that might deter predators from eating them because it's a bit disgusting. But if you've reached that point, you've really pushed that snake to its limit. There is a clear progression of communication up to this point. And if you learn to listen and respect their boundaries, you'll have a much healthier relationship with your snake. Every single product mentioned in this care guide is linked down below. If you want to learn more about king snake care, then there's plenty more videos coming. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.